now it's time for Open House, sponsored by Pyramid Heating and Cooling. All right, it's time to talk tools with my wonderful great friend, Sarah Listy, Tool Girls Garage. Welcome back to Around the House Northwest. Oh my gosh, thanks so much for having me again. You know, I always love being here. <laughs> ah, this is great. And, you know, you've been tackling so many projects. Your plate has been so full. I thought, hey, let's talk some tools and some stuff that you're tackling right now because oh you're always God. doing stuff on social media and you've got a huge following out there. What's some cool stuff you're working with these days? Man, there's been a lot of fun stuff. So I've got a bunch of uh, outdoor projects going, a lot of things, you know, with, um, you know, irrigation and cool stuff with that. A lot of gardening right now, which I'm really into. Um, but I've got some cool woodworking projects too. So I've been working on a handful of new um, furniture builds that are commissioned, which is really exciting. And, you know, I kind of try to mix up what I'm doing and, and, and keep it interesting so I don't get bored. But man, there has been some cool tools coming out of that too. Um, you, I don't know if you yeah. saw my post recently talking about routers. Uh, are yeah, you that thing fan? is amazing. Okay, but you're a router fan, right? Like you're in- Oh yeah, routers. absolutely. Okay. So if I was gonna say there was like one tool that I love the most out of like all the tools in my shop, it's routers, right? I have like eight or something. I'm not even exaggerating, I know. <laughs> but they're different, right? Cause I have like yeah. my router table router, which is a Bosch router, which is amazing. And then I have mm -hmm. like my, you know, um, plunge router. And then I have, you know, the cordless and then I have the, just a trim router. I mean, I have all the different ones and I have different bits sure. in each one. Well, I just got the new flex one, which is a brand new router to the market, dude. It is amazing. Not only is it like nice. crazy powerful and just a beautiful router, but, um, you know, on routers, one of the biggest, like dangerous parts, if you will, is changing the bit. Right. So, and that's can be a pain sometimes. Right. My favorite router for the longest time has been the DeWalt 20 volt cordless router. I love it, right? Cause easy, quick, you know, cordless routers are all the rage now. And I have a little Bosch sure. 12 volt that I love too. Um, but this is the first one that I've ever seen on the flex one that has a lock that you don't hold, right? So you know how like most you have to hold the button, right? And you're like, I need three hands. This one is just yeah. a positive lock. And it's like, I mean, why, why did we not think of this five years ago, right? Like nobody else has ever done that. And and I love it. It's just amazing. I mean, it's yeah. You know, and a lot of people see my, I've got a lot of Milwaukee stuff behind me, but you know, I've been using a lot of Bosch stuff recently as well. So oh. I, you know, I'm not aligned with just one company. I do have a lot of Milwaukee, but that new Bosch stuff, I tell you what, I've got that surgeon, uh, you know, 18 volt, 12 inch uh, compound miter saw. Mm. That thing's a beast. So I'm, I'm hoping to be switching to that soon. I think I, as you know, I'm a big Bosch fan. I've been a Bosch fan for a long time. Out of the, on the market in general, you know, they're, especially their corded, like fixed base routers, you're never gonna find a better router. It's oh, yeah. just, I've used them all, trust me, they don't exist. Cause their electronic yep. controls are so in tune and so well made. It's just the, the thought behind them. And something I've said about Bosch is, they're not the first to come out with something, right? But they're oh. usually, they're gonna wait till they've perfected it, you know? And I love that about brands. There's a few that do that, like Ego with OPE. They're not gonna bring a yeah. hundred new tools out every year, but when they bring them out, like they're, they are dialed in to such a point that you're like, you know your investment's safe in it. But Bosch is that way, man. Bosch, God, they've got good stuff. You know, they're I mean, quiet they're quiet about it. They're quiet and sneaky yes. about it. It's like, yes. it's, it comes out, you know, it's going to be so dialed in and just a yep. great tool where there's a lot of brands. You see that new one come out and you're going, wow, I hope that's decent. Right. Right. Well, they, you know, they came out with a new, um, concrete, uh, fastening tool. Did you see that? I haven't no. tested it yet, but I was thinking, what could I use this for? <laughs> I need to come up with a project for it. Um, nice. but that kind of stuff that like, there's only a couple brands that make that specific tool really out there, right? Yeah. And most of them are OEM'd by other people. So for Bosch to do that, I feel like that could be a really big game changer for them because there's not that many. So it's not a big market. And if they are, if they can deliver what we all know Bosch can, again, not- Yeah, the and there's so much power to them as well. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, and, and that's one of the things that I'll say, and you and I talked about this earlier is that, when you have a highly powerful tool like that 12 inch, Whew. you need to respect that. That is not like your little seven and a quarter inch, 
you know, Very saw true. that's yeah. that's battery, that thing will kick back like a table saw if you try to push it because it has got a mile of power and you need to respect the tool and follow all the safety stuff because right. it's got that kind of power. Well, and I, it's funny because, you know, the Bosch, how they deliver that power, they have their core 18 volt batteries, right? And I think a lot of people sort of viewed them as like kind of being sleepy with battery, right? Because even though, you know, they were really one of the first battery powered lines that really was expansive, um, yeah. you know, people didn't, they recognized the Milwaukee or the DeWalt, that's what they thought of, right? But yeah. the reality is those Bosch batteries, hands down, I've said this for a couple of years, they're some of the best batteries in the market, no question. And now, I don't know if you've seen this too, um, not only can they do the power, like you said, on the miter saw or like on the vacuums, they have cordless vacuum options. They have cordless sanders now. Um, yep. They've got some, they've got a new partnership with like Fine and a couple others that where their batteries are going to be interchangeable on that core wow. battery platform, which is going to be huge. Uh, there's, I, That's I, I, there's going to rock the world out there. Yeah. So it, it later this year, I think some of the fine tools which will start launching. And then, you know, there's, like I said, there's a few others. It's so cool to see that. I mean, yeah. talk about a brand that does yeah. not get enough love for their batteries, but oh my God. And if you need a rotary hammer, Jesus, if you're not going to Bosch, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Like, You gave me a great recommendation earlier that for homeowners and people out there that aren't always, that 12 inch can be a lot to handle. Sometimes getting that yeah. smaller saw is going to be a little easier for you. Right. Well, and I think there's a big difference too when, when we look at like miter saw sizes, right? You know, for normal day-to-day -day stuff, even if you're a pro on a job site, like a 10 inch is still going to be fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the 12 inch is going to give you that bigger capacity and that ability to cut like thicker materials. So if you're doing like four by fours, a lot of six by sixes, for six. example. That That's what I was using it for. Yeah. yeah. The 12 inch is going to come in handy, but it also is pretty rare that most people need all of that and so obviously yeah. that is a powerful saw so if it's intimidating you know there's nothing wrong with going with that 10 inch my god i in fact 10 inches is usually the one i recommend for you know the vast majority of users yeah because yeah. i feel like it's it's that good balance of power and capacity um you know that isn't as intimidating you know and it doesn't I mean, take up as much room in the shop when you're not using it as well Exactly. But th that Bosch design is neat on their, on the slide. They have a really yeah. unique design that not a lot of other companies are doing, um, where the, it, it folds up, right? Yep. Yours does. And I can, I can sit there too, depending, I've got the one on the two posts that come out okay. that okay, way. Okay, yeah. But then what I love about it is how you can just easily flip it to, uh, to do miters and stuff, how that thing just swings right over on both sides. It is right. well designed. Right. Well, and it's funny too, you know, the, a, another point on like the 12 versus 10 versus a smaller, you know, there is always going to be the larger blade you have. And this goes for table saws too, when you're looking at like a standard 10 inch table saw to like, say one of the portable job site that's like eight and a half or seven and a quarter. Cause there, there are a handful now that's getting more and more common. The bigger yep. the blade, the more deflection you're going to have. Right. So yep. if you're in like a, a standard carpentry shop, that 10 inch is really a good spot. Whereas, yeah. you know, so there, and that's another consideration that I feel like, you know, even if it's amazing, you know, and, and it is an amazing saw, but like, no matter what saw you're using, the larger the blade, the more deflection, you know, you have to keep that in mind too. If you're doing like nothing but crown work, I know some people that have had better luck with those really small miter saws versus yep. the big boys, because they just, you know, it, it is, it is going to be a hair more accurate. No, that's what, that's what puts a smile on your face when you're using it, right? Oh, man. Like I said, I could gush about routers and track saws and miter saws all day. Like, <laughs> We've done it. We've quick. done it. I know. Exactly. <laughs> well, Sarah, how do people track you down? Social media, website, all that stuff? Because you're always creating wonderful content. I am everywhere, all over social media at Tool Girls Garage, you know, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the places. And then of course, uh, toolgirlsgarage.com. And then you can find my show Murder House Slip on Roku as well. So that's still hanging around there. And um, yeah, website, blog, all the things, all the things. All right, Sarah, thanks for doing this again. It's always great. And I can't oh. wait for next time. Thank you so much for having me, bud.